Our next case is Dean Witter Reynolds versus uh, Variable Annuity Life, and this case concerns the area of bailment. Uh, now, this is a very interesting case. It's a relatively uh, recent case, uh, a 2004 case, and it comes out of the uh, United States Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit, and it's an appeal from the United States District Court uh, for the District of Colorado. And it, it's worth reading the, uh, the, the, the opening paragraph because very often what you'll find in, in law school is you'll, you'll have a, a, an interesting case and the court goes through the process of, of, of writing an, an interesting opinion. And sometimes the judges, like any other good writer, try uh, to, uh, to be creative and, and to write something that will be interesting to read. So in this particular case, what you find is that uh, the uh, court has uh, some very interesting uh, language in the opening paragraph. And I'll, I'll just read some of it to you. In the world of instantaneous electronic funds transfer and online financial transactions, one would think that the old problems of disappearing checks, uncertain mail deliveries, and unknown thieves, long the staple of law school hypotheticals, would cease to have much practical significance. In this case, however, defendant, the Variable Annuity Life Insurance Company, VALIC, opted to do it the old-fashioned way. It sent two checks via the Postal Service to its customer's broker in Houston, Texas. True to form, an unknown thief intercepted one of the checks and used it to open a fraudulent account in Los Angeles. As a result of vacations, horse and buggy procedures, and allegedly willful foot dragging and miscommunications, payment was not stopped on the stolen check until some two months after it was mailed, by which time the thief had made off with most of the proceeds. And this lawsuit is determined who should bear the loss. This court has found it necessary to blow the dust off an ancient common law doctrine of negotiable instruments, bailments, and assignability of shows as an action. In tribute to the enduring character of the common law, we apply these legal concepts to this 21st century dispute. Now, you know, it's a very interesting uh, way the court uses its language, but it's a, it's a very serious uh, case, and it involved, uh, as the court summarized, a situation where Mrs. Merle Bass contacted um, uh, her, her insurance company, which is VALIC, and says that she wanted to uh, liquidate some proceeds of her account and have them sent to Dean Witter. Uh, so, I mean, basically what happened was uh, the court identified correctly the fact that uh, there were two checks. One check was the amount of, of about $211,000. The other check was for uh, about $127,000. And they mailed these checks to Deacon Witter. And, you know, that's, that was essentially uh, a key to this case because that's what they were instructed to do. She, she asked them to mail the checks. They mailed the checks. So what happens is she goes on vacation for three weeks. She's out of the country. And when she comes back, she picks up the phone. She calls her Dean Witter officer in, in Houston and finds out that the checks haven't arrived yet. So she uh, is, is, is very disturbed. And, and to make a long story short, what happens is there's a series of, of misadventures whereby um, she's asked for the checks to be stopped. And what happens is one check actually gets, what's, gets paid it clears before they can make a stop payment on the check and the other one they were able to make a stop payment on but it, 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 it took quite some time so ultimately what happened was the person the, the thief uh, opened up a fraudulent Dean Winter account using a variation using a name which is a variation of her name so they could forge the the, the check and uh, ultimately uh, stole one hundred sixty thousand dollars so in this particular case, what we had was an assignment of claims. Now, an assignment of claims is, is something that's, that's pretty common in the law, and basically what it is is uh, a situation where, um, as exemplified here, uh, the, the, the person who was, who was robbed, in this case uh, Mrs. Bass, gets her money back from uh, Dean Witter, and then Dean Witter uh, brought a lawsuit under her rights against VALIC. And they charge VLIC with uh, uh, misdelivery of bailment, breach of contract, fraud, promissory estoppel, and the Colorado Consumer Protection Act, and uh, breach of fiduciary duty. So there was a laundry list of things that uh, Dean Witter brought, claims that Dean Witter brought 
against uh, VALIC. Now, VALIC, you know, has their, their defenses, and they're saying that, you know, we, we did what we, we were told to do. We mailed the thing. Uh, and then there were arguments back and forth as to whether or not they were prompt in trying to stop the check because uh, there, was, there was a time period during which uh, it appears, though, they, they had the opportunity within a couple of days or so to stop payment on the check. The court makes uh, the observation that the bailment claim was a very uh, strong claim. It's a, it's, it's a very urgent claim. And they identify the fact that Dean Winter presented two versions of his bailment claim. First, in briefs presented at district court, they said that uh, the check was the race of the bailment. The, the check is the thing of the bailment. Now, you'll be studying bailments in, in law school, and one of the uh, most common forms of bailment is uh, the typical situation where you take your car to a local parking lot, and you leave it there, and you get a claim check in return, and you, know, you, you pay them for watching your car or, or, or housing your car uh, for a period of time. That's, that's a common bailment. And in this, in, in the car, in that particular situ situation would be the race, the R-E-S, the race, the thing itself. Now, the court in this case says that, the bail, that uh, Dean Witt argues that the race was the bailment, and they also argued that the funds were the bailment. So they have two different arguments as to what the race, the funds were, were the race. Uh, the funds were was, what, what was bailed. And any unauthorized delivery of bailed property by a bailee, even delivery to the wrong person resulting from the bailee's good faith mistakes, constitutes conversion. So there's a conversion claim that's involved here. Further, they, the court says, baileys are not only liable for losses occasioned by their negligence, which is what is being asserted here, but for those which arise from innocent mistakes in the delivery of goods to persons not entitled to receive them. So we're talking about some very harsh uh, law here. Uh, now, ultimately, what happens is the court goes on to make uh, some, some, some observations about the banking law. And the, one of the things that you will find very interesting in this case is, is a discussion about common deposits that are made in a bank. And the court identifies the fact that when a person I, makes a, a deposit in a bank, the person is essentially loaning the money to the bank. And the title actually passes from the depositor to the bank. So in other words, when you go down to the bank, you're actually loaning money to the bank, and the bank now has your money. And uh, the, the title to that, to that money has passed from you to the bank. And the court says that uh, in the ordinary course, title to deposited funds passes to the bank, and a debt in the amount deposited is created between the financial institution and the depositor. So the bank owes you your money. It follows that VALIC's attempted transfer of funds by means of mailing a check to Mrs. Bass's broker was not the delivery of a bailment, but an attempt to satisfy its outstanding obligations as Mrs. Bass's debtor. So that's how the court came out in that particular case, and it's, it's definitely worth a read.